Do you also see Navia and Clorand over there? They look like they might have run into some kind of trouble. Exactly. Let's go check None out what's going me. on! Hello, my fellow heroes of all dimensions and beyond. This is Melody of Valentine. Exactly. Uh -huh. Shut up a minute! <laughs> uh, this is Melody of Valentine, and welcome back to another episode of Genshin Impact. Which, uh, Nafia and Karan, uh, Karan, or however you pronounce her name, is sorry, over here, and so let's see what's going on. Hmm. Still no dice? Uh, not at all. And I've asked pretty much everyone in the Court of Fontaine already. Oh, okay. Lynette's case. ears drooped as soon as she heard that we'd have to be out and about for days on end. And Fremine. Uh, he hid himself under his helmet as soon as he realized there'd be people around that he didn't know. Hmm. What about Chiori and Charlotte? I feel like both of them would be more than up to it. Mm, I've asked them already, but they're both pretty busy right now. I just gave the members of the Spina a few days off, too, so I don't want to bother them either. Hmm. This is getting pretty difficult. Nadia! Cloran! What's up? Oh my. <laughs> well, if it isn't my dear partners, how are you all doing? Huh. Navia? Huh? Oh, you mean... Yep, this is our chance. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What Do you need our help with something? Oh, precisely. My dear partners, we've got a huge problem right now that only you can solve. Hmm? Whoa, for real? What is Absolutely. it? Absolutely. We've already exhausted all our other options. What kind of problem? Traveler, Paimon, would you join us and play Mar Chose Hunter Judgment Day? Say what? What's that? Mara, she'll say what now? It's a new game script by the Tabletop Troupe, a local roleplay adventure club. Ever heard of the Tabletop Troupe? They put out games that allow you to participate in a story and roleplay characters with your friends. Oh, I've loved their stuff ever since I was a kid. Oh, that that sounds, sounds like fun. Interesting. Clorand and I are both veteran members of the club. Recently, someone came up with a new script and was looking for people to help playtest it for them. And when they asked, of course I couldn't refuse. <laughs> I mean, come on, a brand new script? Nobody has ever played it before. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, scripts at that level of development have a lot of issues, but I think this one is pretty solid. The author obviously put a lot of work into the story, and the world building is also quite credible. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I know I was the one that handed you the script, but some of us haven't read it yet. No spoilers, please. <laughs> anyway, the script calls for a team of four. Ah, yes. We're missing one final player right now. You're right. That is a big problem. But wait a minute. Karan is one. Navia is two. I'm the third. Paimon can't be the fourth one. She can't fight. So, you're saying you'll help us out? <laughs> I knew I could count on you, partner. Uh, Paimon and the Traveler are kind of a package deal. Is that okay? That's not a problem. I'll adjust the pace based on the actual number of players and ensure that everyone has a good time. Well, Traveler, what do you think? Wanna play? Paimon will follow your lead. <laughs> I always help a friend in need. Well, that solves our problem. You have our thanks. <laughs> I'll go grab the script manager from the club right away. The script manager? Didn't you just say that you gave Clarem the script? The club introduced a completely new kind of gameplay for the script. In this iteration, the game master's version of the script is incomplete. The script manager provides the next part of the script only after players have completed the current list of objectives. On top of that, in order to increase player immersion, the club has created some of the story's sets and scenes in real life. 
We'll only know where we should go once the script manager reveals the starting location. Wow, you're right. Whoever wrote this script really did put in a lot of work. <laughs> and it's got a real healthy amount of suspense, right? I mean, even the GM doesn't know how the story will end. I look forward to experiencing it with you all. Why don't you go meet up with the others first? They should all be waiting at Chioria Boutique. I'll come over with the script manager as soon as I find them. Sounds good. Remember to always watch where you're going, and don't rush. Oh, you say that like I'm six years old or something. <laughs> hmm, let me think. What kind of character should I play this time? I just hope you'll pick up some useful skills this time. Oh, and stop trying to persuade every animal you come across. Silent Night. Isn't that a Christmas song? Looks like there's some people over here. But they might not be part of this. I don't think they are. Nope. Hey! It's Lenny and Farina! Are they part of this too? Oh, sorry to keep you waiting. Ah, uh, you're back! Huh? And you've got the Traveler and Paimon with you too! What a pleasant surprise. I assume you'll be joining us for the game then? Lenny, Farina! Paimon didn't know you were playing too! Are you also members of the Tabletop Troop? Hey, you two! B missed ya! Hmm, I'm more of a casual member, if anything. I haven't taken part in many formal club activities. Lynette Fremenet and I play something similar at the Hotel Bouffe Tete sometimes, but I'm usually the GM. Still, I'm sure it'll be fun being a player for the first time. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a moment. For those who don't know game lingo, usually in this kind of thing, when you call someone the GM, that means that they are the game master. That, in other words, they're the ones that tell the story as the game progresses. In other words, it's up to the GM to come up with the scenarios and you know, what kind of enemies that that the the your characters will face in in this type of role play game something kind of like dungeons and dragons for example so let's continue with this well, I'm not a member of the club at all. Cloran simply woke me up first thing this morning, said there was a good script worth experiencing, and asked if I wanted in. If you're interested, I can give you a referral. That should give you a 40% discount on membership fees. I think I'll wait to see how this experience plays out first, especially when it comes to the quality of the script. If it's sufficiently fun, then I'll join. Do you participate in a lot of tabletop troop activities, Clarine? You could say that. She's actually one of the few senior game masters of the troop. Ooh! Uh, right. I knew about that even when she was still my subordinate. Uh, <laughs> it's nothing. Really, just a small hobby of mine. Hey, you should have oh, felt the I'm feeling so there, used to seeing you be all upstanding and intimidating as the champion duelist. It's kind of hard to imagine you role playing with a bunch of friends. So, if we have a problem in, with any of the rules, do we have to submit a dual request with you? <laughs> oh my god, no! I don't want to. I don't want to do her. No. Surely you jest. I would never intentionally make things difficult for my players. I maintain a clear boundary between my professional and personal lives. The me you see at court represents the law and order of Fontaine. I put all personal feelings to the side, and grant a fair duel to all who seek to defend their honor. But, in my personal life, I'm just an ordinary person. 
someone who feels anger and sadness, just like everyone else. Well, you say that, but for all the time I've known you, I don't think I've ever seen you cry. I've seen you get angry, sure, but now I'm wondering whether you were actually mad or if it just looked that way from the outside. Uh, I was probably in work mode during those times. Is that so? Well, in any case, I just feel like even in your personal life, you don't get emotional very often. So you want to see me cry? That might be a little difficult. A show of anger, though, that might be something I could accomplish. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> So who's the D the GM for this? Ah, I'm back. Here, allow me to introduce you to the script manager, Mr. Florian. Pleasure to meet you all. Hello. Uh, wait, are you a champion duelist too, Mr. Florian? Oh no, this is just the costume provided by the club. I occasionally play a few of the roles in my scripts. That sounds like a lot of work. It's nothing. It's the least we can do to give the players a more immersive experience. Anyway, allow me to give you a brief introduction of the script. This script was adapted from the real history of the Maro Shosei Hunters. You all will play the role of hunters from a bygone era and resolve a series of events unfolding in the capital. Um, Ooh. I'm not super familiar with the history of the Maro Shosei Hunters. Is that Oh, no problem at all. I can give you a brief rundown. So, basically, Mara Shosei hunters were people who dedicate themselves to hunting monsters and protecting the city by using a special swordsmanship technique passed down over generations. Their story can be traced back to the ancient Remurian dynasty, as well as the first hunter, Cassiodor. But I'll leave the finer details for you to seek out and discover later. Oh, so it's mm -hmm. a learning journey and as well. I'll provide nice. additional commentary as the story progresses. In that case, <clears throat> brave hunters, are you ready to set out on an unknown adventure? Adventure! Oh, just one sentence and it's like we're in the story already. Aha, uh -huh. I see many a determined gaze before me. Very well. Head over to this location and begin your heroic journey. So, as we follow the story, it leads us to specific scenes? Ooh, sounds pretty innovative. What does the message in the envelope say? It's the exact location of the scene, as well as the formal permission to use the venue. <laughs> Seems like they have everything prepared. Please check all your belongings, everyone, and make sure you haven't forgotten anything. Once you're ready, Please follow me to the designated location. Sounds good. Hunter squad, move out! Oh, this is exciting. So exciting. party and a fishing thing? Wow, they really have thought of everything. Even the Phaetometer is here and ready to go for us. The Phaetometer? What's that? It's a card that's used to determine action success or failure. We'll need to use it when we try to use certain skills. And what about all the dessert and tea? Is that for us as well? That's what the message said. 
Uh, really? That's so nice. It feels just like a tea party with friends. Those snacks have Paimon's name written all over them. Uh, <laughs> hang on. I think you might be more of a snack hunter than a Mara Shosei hunter, Paimon. Snack hunter Paimon reporting for duty. If there are delicious snacks to be found, Paimon will track down every last one. <laughs> the desserts are great. <laughs> but I'm still looking forward to the story more than anything. <laughs> Very fair. Then, let us begin. First, please pick up the blank character cards in front of you, and write down your name and profession. You can find an abbreviated version of the rules printed on the back of your character card. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. In this story, everyone is a Mara Chaussee hunter. To reflect this, the club has prepared a small badge for everyone. Ooh, nice! As hunters, you have proficiency in swordsmanship and fighting by default, so there's no need to allocate any additional skill points to those areas. Swordsmanship? So there's a fighting part to all of this? Um, Paimon's not sure she can do all that on her own. Maybe Paimon can just stick with you? Why don't you share a character card then? The Traveler will be the Mara Chaussee Hunter, and you can be her little floating assistant. <laughs> huh. Kinda like in real life. So, for the name, do I fill it out with the name of my character? Yep. It can be any name you like. You can use your real name too if you want. I do that whenever I get too lazy to think of a new name. <laughs> oh! That sounds like me so too. So it can be like, uh, like experiencing a different life, but still as yourself. Hmm. That's not a bad idea. Hmm. In that case, I think I'll continue to use the name Linny then. Next up is the skill sheet. You have a limited amount of skill points that you can use to learn a number of skills. The more points you invest in a particular skill, the easier it will be to pass associated checks. Hmm. I'll take... Persuasion and Investigation. Those are must-haves when it comes to missions like these. Oh, those skills sound like they'd be useful for gathering intelligence! Good idea, Navia! Just as expected of a veteran player. Hmm... So, should we also take those skills, then? Not necessarily. Since we're working together as a team, we could leave the negotiations to Navia and use our skill points to pick up other useful skills. For example, I think I'll take Stealth and Sleight of Hand. That will give us more options if we run into any situations we can't so negotiate that would our make way out. So, Lenny of. the thief of oh, the group. Oh, interesting. I wasn't thinking about it like that. I suppose it's not so different from an acting troupe. Everyone has their own role to play. Let me see. I'll take arts and performance. I'm not quite sure what use will be. But I'm not as knowledgeable about the other skills, and uh, I am not too confident I'd be able to roleplay them well. Well, that leaves us. What do you want to learn, Traveler? Hmm... Insight! Oh, something that'll help you get a read on other people's thoughts! Sounds useful! Ooh, so you want to help people when they're injured! That's nice of you! So what do you think? Are you sure you want to learn these two skills? Let's see... Hmm. Oh, looks like you each have enough points to choose one final skill. You all pick such classic skills. It's fine to go a little bit out of the box, you know. Why do I get the feeling she's getting ready to cause trouble? For example, this one here. Summon. Doesn't it sound super mysterious and cool? Oh, oh, I saw that one just now as well. The uh, description says, This skill can be used under certain circumstances to summon characters or creatures that fit the script's world-building rules. The script's world-building rules, huh? Hmm. Wait, what the heck is that to know what walking Amara in the back? Hunter can summon? You all saw that oh, too, that's right? that's for us to worry about, my friend. Just learn the skills that interest you, and the GM will take care of the rest. 
<sighs> All right, you've convinced Paimon. Let's learn something then. Paimon can't wait to see what kind of thing shows up. Well, now that everyone's oh, more the or less crab. finished creating their characters, we can begin. Since two of our players are doing this for the first time, though, let me ask. Would you like to play on easy mode or authentic mode? Uh, what's the difference between the two? Well, in role-playing games, the story sometimes changes based on the decisions of the players and the results of the fatometer. For example, if you fail a check, that means you cannot use the target skill in that scenario. A critical failure may even result in further negative consequences. If you choose to play in authentic mode, every time you elect to use a skill, you'll need to use the fatometer to see whether you succeed or fail, and face any consequences that may follow. If you choose easy mode instead, every check will be successful by default, and you won't have to worry about luck playing a factor. The random checks triggered by the phenomenon often serves as indicators for the destiny's course or the success or failure of an action. Draw a press the pre uh, player card. Draw, draw a card and a random number one to twelve. If the number displayed is greater than or equal to the difficulty, you will. Oh, okay. So this is kind of like what it was when I was doing the thing with the hat. So, I... okay. Okay! Hmm... Given that I'd like to focus on the story, I suppose I should pick easy mode. I'd feel bad if I brought the team down by failing my checks. Huh? Oh, come on. Don't worry about that. RNG is the lifeblood of role-playing games. I'm going with authentic mode for sure. Never knowing what you might have to overcome. Ugh, doesn't that sound exciting? Mm. Um, I, I'd rather be mentally prepared for what might happen. All right, then I'll mark down Farina for easy mode. All her checks will be successful by default. As usual, Navia and Linny will play on authentic mode. What about you, dear partner? How would you like to play? Well, the thing is, I mean, yeah, I usually play easy mode when I can on games I'm not sure of, but since this is an RPG and it's no fun playing certain RPGs on easy mode, let's go with authentic. Are you sure? Yep, I'm sure. <laughs> Trust me, you'll see the beauty of RNG. Honestly, I don't think Clorand would make things too difficult for us, no matter what the Phaeton And that crab says. is just vibing in Isn't the background. Isn't that right, Hmm, <laughs> no promises. Ah, uh, that wasn't super reassuring. Well, anyway, enough talk. Let's get started. I want to experience at least a good chunk of the story today. Speaking of the story, why is the beginning scene on a beach? Well, that's because... <clears throat> a long time ago, back when human <gasps> civilization was still oh, in its infancy, the... powerful demons and evil sorcerers ruled over the land. They created a host of monsters and sent them to slaughter all humans in existence. Soon, a group of human rebels banded together. With their swords raised, they swore to brave the darkness, and in doing so, subdue each and every monster that sought their destruction. They became known as the Marashose Hunters. Oh, I want one of those pins! Ooh, I like, I like, I like, I like, I like. I want one of those pins. Sometime later, 
As a member of the Mara Chaussee Hunters, you receive a commission. Following the address provided on the message, you take a boat and arrive at this strange city. As you inhale, you can taste the slightly salty air of the docks as you begin to survey your surroundings. There aren't many people in the vicinity, but you do take note of a few others who, like you, seem to be sizing up this place. Your eyes meet, and you realize these people are fellow Mara Chose hunters, likely led to this location after receiving the same commission as you. You're all Mara Chose hunters too, right? Allow me to introduce myself. The name's Navia, monster hunter by trade and helpful neighborhood businesswoman on the side. What say you to traveling together? We can help each other out on the road. Okay, count me in. My name is Linny. I've been wandering since I was little and picked up a few less than legal tricks along the way. I was adopted by a Mara Chose hunter and later chose to follow in his footsteps. Uh, is this where you introduce your character to everyone? It sounds like they've done this dozens of times. <clears throat> My name is Farina, and, um, I grew up in a noble family. I always had a strong interest in performance and the arts. Even though I'm a Marsha Say hunter, what I really want is to be a performing artiste. Hey, that's really cool. You can do it, Farina. That's exactly how it's done. Paimon is Paimon, a good friend and to this Mara Chose hunter right here. I've been studying medicine ever since I was a child. I want to do my part to eradicate these monsters and use what I've learned to heal others. Oh, welcome, welcome. When we face the monsters, I'll make sure to charge in front to give everyone some cover. You can take care of the healing at the back. You open your envelopes at the same time. The message reads, to the honorable and trustworthy Mara Chose hunters, our kingdom is currently facing a grave crisis. The lands outside the capital have been overtaken by monsters, and our people are being led astray by forces of wickedness. We beseech you, please help us resolve this crisis and return peace and stability to our home. Huh, the layout of this city looks super familiar. It kind of reminds Paimon of Mondstadt! The scriptwriter must have used a real-world city as a reference when coming up with the map. <clears throat> as experienced hunters, the layout of the city reminds you of places once traveled. You recall the sight of tree-lined streets and the gentle tranquility of days gone by. Yet, as you regard the city in front of you, it appears to be little more than an empty shell. Its hollow gates are open to you, beckoning you to come forth and bring salvation back to the town. I carefully read every line of the letter and turn my attention to the signatures at the bottom. Who issued this commission to us? You see a long string of unfamiliar names. It would seem that many of the residents of the city issued this commission together. They sensed that things were not right within the kingdom, and sent a distress signal to the outside world. Hmm. In that case, why don't we take a walk around the city and see if we can learn anything from the local residents? Oh, good idea. We might be able to get some leads on the monsters and bad guys we're after. You look up and see a tavern nearby. It appears to be open for the day. Why don't we go check out that tavern? If the novels I've read are anything to go by, taverns are usually full of information. Hey, this looks like Angel Share! We are in Monster! As you approach the tavern, you find a plainly dressed woman standing nearby. She appears to be rather troubled about something. Oh, she looks like she's upset. Wonder what's wrong. Greetings, friend. 
Lovely weather we're having today, don't you think? Oh, hello. I suppose you're right. The weather today is quite lovely. If only those monsters out there would stop causing trouble. It seems like every character included in the script has a certain amount of useful information to offer. If we keep asking questions, we might be able to get some good leads. Oh, come now. Don't be sad. Life is all about optimism. Oh, that reminds me. What did you have for breakfast this morning? <coughs> uh, huh? Uh, I don't think that's the kind of question we're supposed to ask. Nothing turns a frown upside down like good food. How about some macarons? I could make you some. You didn't even take cooking as one of your skill proficiencies. Uh, that's not necessary, miss. Excuse me for saying this, but you don't really look like a chef. Besides, I'm not really a fan of sweets. So you're someone who barely smiles and doesn't like sweets. Hmm. You're really starting to remind me of this one friend of mine. <clears throat> Did she just... Huh? Me? <sighs> Chlorian must have broke character for a second. <sighs> this isn't getting us anywhere. Um, Traveler, maybe you can think of something. I'd like to do an insight check to see what's troubling her. The results of insight checks aren't disclosed to the players. So, I'll be the one consulting the Phaetometer. <clears throat> you recall all the lessons you've learned in your time, and begin to carefully observe the woman's mannerisms. You notice that when she's quiet, she has an empty look in her eyes, as if her thoughts have drifted to a place far, far away. And when she speaks, she often subconsciously reaches out to touch the ring on her left hand. <clears throat> Did something happen to your husband? May I ask, dear lady? Ah, uh, so you noticed. That's a little embarrassing. <sighs> a horde of monsters suddenly appeared near the capital recently, so all the guards were dispatched to fight them. Oh. Do you remember when those monsters appeared? Uh, I'm not completely sure. All I know is that my husband was dispatched to fight them three days ago. Do you know where he was sent? It all happened so fast. When we said our goodbyes, he couldn't even tell me where they were sending him. You have our thanks, friend. We'll find and defeat those monsters as soon as possible. We sincerely hope your husband will be able to return to your side soon. Oh, thank you. Don't worry. We'll find him. Just try to remain optimistic and wait for good news. We don't always get to choose what happens to us. But we do get to choose the little things like what we eat and how we respond to the things life throws our way. I hope that one day, you too will recognize the power of something as small and inconsequential as a delicious dessert. I... I'll do my best. You bid farewell to the woman, and continue your journey further into the city. Oh, it seems like there's a lot more people here too. I can't talk to them, though. As you venture further into the city, the streets appear largely empty. An elderly woman walks past. You see her shake her head as she puts away her wrinkled wallet. A nearby merchant folds his arms and gives you a disdainful look. You get the impression that he's someone who has long gotten used to the sight before him. Oh, shit. Oh, that's intimidating. Although he doesn't seem very 
Friendly. Merchants are usually a good source of information, right? Pardon me, sir. I'd like to ask a question, if I may. That depends. How much are you willing to pay? How about this much? Kuh, what do you take me for? Some lowly beggar? Kuh, you can't even buy half an onion with that amount. <laughs> Surely an onion can't be that expensive, right? Eh, what do you know? War is nearly upon us. Everything costs several times what it did before. If you're not gonna buy anything, then scram. Whoa, what a nasty guy. Maybe we shouldn't even bother talking to him. Hmm, but he still might have information we need. Uh, Traveler, can you think of something? Oh, it's asking me to do... Uh... Persuade him, Navia! Sir, we came to this city to solve the very problem you seem to be referring to. The war you mentioned, uh, would it happen to be against the monsters outside the city? If you happen to be well informed, and know a thing or two about what's going on, we'd appreciate it if you could share that information with us. After all, the sooner this problem gets resolved, the easier it will be for you to do your business. Well, things are basically as you said, young lady. Those monsters are camped outside the city, and they've been destroying all our trade routes. We have limited reserves within the city, so if this continues, we're all gonna be in big trouble. Wait, you're saying no one has put a plan in place to distribute supplies or maintain order? <laughs> we could all starve, and those nobles in the palace wouldn't even break a sweat. Who knows? Maybe they've been in cahoots with the monsters all along. That is concerning. All right, all right. That's all the information you need, right? Off with you now. I've still got business to do. You know, if you smiled a little more, you'd definitely get more business. And I bet that would make your life just a little bit sweeter. I'm not saying it's guaranteed to work. It's just a tip. <laughs> Okay. Should we try to go somewhere with more people? Oh, how about the city square? Uh, follow me. Before you lies the city's central square. You see a man with a slightly anxious look on his face, pacing back and forth, his head hanging low. He doesn't seem to notice your approach. Still immersed in his own thoughts, he shakes his head and lets out a long sigh. <sighs> this guy seems promising enough. Maybe I can get some information out of him. Hello, sir. Is there anything I can do to help you? Uh, wait, you're... Uh, I'm... Oh, dear goodness! You're... you're a Mara Chose hunter! You recognize us? Ah, are you... One of the people who wrote the commission letter? Yes, yes! Oh, I didn't expect you to actually come! Oh, what great news! The city is saved! What happened here? Alas, we once lived comfortable, carefree lives. This city used to be free of monsters. The first Mara Chose hunter, Cassiador, the Golden Hunter, he was the one who drove them back. However, Monsters have once again surrounded the city. Perhaps the seal that kept them at bay has lost its power. Or perhaps an evil sorcerer has been meddling in our affairs. Uh, all I know for sure is that their return has stripped the city of any chance at peace. Are there not enough soldiers to drive them out? It's not a question of numbers. 
The guards simply have no idea how to deal with them. Most people my age have never even seen one of the monsters, much less been trained to fight against them. Uh, what's worse, many of us don't even know the history of the Mara Shose hunters anymore. When I was a child, though, my grandfather would tell me stories about how the Mara Shose hunters drove back the monsters. So, on the off chance that something might come of it, I decided to reach out to you. To be perfectly honest, I was starting to think all those stories were just tall tales. But now that I've seen you in person, I finally know that it was true! Well, you can rest easy, friend. The righteous and formidable Marshose hunters are on the case. The man is touched by your determination and resolve. His eyes begin to well with tears of relief. Still, if we are going to hunt the monsters, we need to know where to find them. Can you give us any leads? Uh, all I know is that the area outside the city is dangerous. I'm afraid I can't point you toward a specific location. Oh, although, if you leave the capital through the main gate and follow the road, you should run into a group of guards. They might know more about where to find the monsters. I see. We'll go look for them, then. All right. Be careful. Oh, and one last thing. The monsters outside the city are just part of the problem. There are evil sorcerers inside the city as well, so be on your guard. They're actively working with the monsters, and have corrupted the court ministers with malicious magic. They're the reason why, even inside the city, everything has been a giant mess. Even one of our kindest ministers has turned into a boorish and unreasonable figure, interested in nothing but enacting laws that exploit the people. Uh, who knows how much longer we'll be able to go on like this. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. Mm, I feel bad for him. Maybe we should try to cheer him up? I could cook some- Oh, wait a minute. I can't cook. I didn't pick cooking. Oh, but I picked insight and medicine. I can't cook. Uh, Farina, could you sing him a song? Uh-huh. Like, now? Is this really the right time? I appreciate your kindness, but for now, it's more important to focus on the crisis at hand. Brave hunters, I leave the future of this kingdom to you. Of course. Oh, this story is getting exciting. I love this. Wait a minute, it is the yellow one? Is that the one that I have? Because I'm a doctor with insight. If I understood correctly, there are currently two problems in the kingdom that need solving, right? Mm hmm. Exactly. We need to defeat the monsters outside the city and take down the evil sorcerer, stirring up trouble from within. Hmm. But which problem should we tackle first? Well. This seems like a good moment for a break. Take some time and discuss what you want to do. Let me know when you've made your decision. <sighs> I really didn't expect the people in the city to keep us at arm's length like that. I totally thought the hunters would be treated like heroes. Well, Clarence said the script took cues from the real history of Fontaine, right? Maybe the real life Mara Chose hunters were also treated like that. I wouldn't say it's a perfect representation of history, but there are definitely some similarities. Would you like to hear more about it? Mm, sure. As long as it doesn't spoil anything in the script. You've brought up bits and pieces of the Hunter's history before, but it was all in passing. Hyman wants to know too! The Hunters were super powerful, right? Were they all from a special line of supernatural beings or something? Kinda like... the Yokai in Inazuma? Uh, no. All Mara Shose hunters were ordinary mortal fighters. The only thing that set them apart were the special sword techniques passed down over the centuries. Huh? So you mean anyone could become a Mara Shose hunter? In theory, yes. 
All you would need to do is survive the rigorous training and master the swordsmanship techniques required to fight the monsters. Still, most people dropped out at the early stages, and others called it quits the minute they saw a monster in person. To become a hunter, you must be strong in both body and mind. What kind of monsters did the hunters fight exactly? Oh, and the evil sorcerer the script mentions. Did they exist in real life too? The land of Fontaine once played host to an ancient dynasty known as Remuria. After that dynasty fell, monsters began to appear, intent on obstructing humans from establishing a new social order. One of the ancient sorcerers of Remuria used his power to assemble a formidable army of golems. He sought to use that force to establish himself as king. Uh, now wait a second. Don't tell me that guy was the inspiration for the evil sorcerer in the script. We still haven't found any in-game information on him yet. So uh, why don't you talk about someone else for now? Well, I wasn't planning on going into anything you might be able to find out in the game. But if you want me to talk about something else, then... How about Cassiodor, the Golden Hunter? Or Egeria, the ex-Hydro Archon? Wait, but those people are all from a super long time ago. Where did you learn all this, Clarion? From my master. Huh, by master? You mean... Miss Petronia? Oh, is someone you know? Absolutely. Miss Petronia and my father were good friends. Back in the day, she would often bring Clorand over to play, but then... Uh, let's not get off topic. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Responding to Egeria's call, a number of warriors followed Cassiodor into battle against the monsters. This group of warriors, under Cassiodor's leadership, became known as the Marachose Hunters. Yet, as Fontaine entered an era of peace, their work gradually became obsolete. The Marachose Phantom, originally an association made up of hunters, eventually came to be predominantly comprised of Melusines. Ah, I see. That explains why most of the people in the script have forgotten the hunters, or think of them as nothing more than a legend. Is that really a bad thing, though? It can get tough always being the one shouldering everyone's expectations. Oh, uh, you know that one well. Mm, depends on who you ask, I suppose. If the name of the organization no longer commands respect, investigative work is bound to suffer. Mm, speaking of investigations, which problem should we tackle first? Monsters or evil sorcerer? I vote monsters. That's the main duty of the hunters, right? We can come back to the sorcerer later. Mm. Well said, Miss Farina. Plus, if the sorcerers really are the masterminds behind this whole thing, defeating the monsters could give us some clues on their intentions as well. Hmm. What about you, partner? What do you think? The sorcerer problem seems more important because they're inside of the city. We need to do something about them because if we just fight the monsters... So this is my personal opinion, guys. If we don't f take care of the sorcerers first, then if we're just fighting the monsters, they're just gonna keep coming and coming and coming because these sorcerer guys are like pow, 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 sending them out. So I say the sorcerers are, I mean, yeah, they're gonna be trickier, but I say the sorcerers. I mean, you're not wrong. Those characters are usually the ones pulling the strings behind the scenes. More often than not, they're very formidable opponents. Going after them now might be jumping the gun a little bit. <laughs> we don't want a total party kill on the first day, right? With Clorand as the GM, I wouldn't rule out the possibility. <sighs> well, you persuaded me. <laughs> then it's settled. Let's go hunt some monsters. All right. After some discussion, you decide to turn around and head out of the city. Uh, I hope we're not... I got a feeling that we might regret it.
You there, outsiders, halt! Whoa! Who, who's there? An armored man approaches you. He has a tall, muscular build and a determined expression in his eyes. Just one look, and you can tell he's fought in his fair share of battles. Although he's trying his best to conceal his current state, his uneven gait and the sweat dripping down his forehead make it obvious that he's been wounded and is in serious pain. I'm the captain of the guard. I saw you sneaking around the city earlier, so I'll only ask this once. State your purpose, or it's off to the dungeons for the lot of you. Wow, it's been a while since someone's been this suspicious of us. I said talk, not whisper between yourselves. Uh, <clears throat> have you ever heard of the Marsha Say Hunters? Mara Chose Hunters? Ha! <laughs> that fairy tale, you mean? What, do you expect me to believe you're one of them? I'd like to do a, a medicine check to see if I can help him. Oh, I failed. With some suspicion, the captain allows you to survey his condition after you announce yourself as a trained doctor. Unfortunately, you're unable to adequately assess the source of his injury, much less come up with a way to relieve his pain. Sorry, my skills are a little rusty. Well, this is no ordinary wound. It was inflicted by a monster. Now tell me, are you truly a Marachose hunter? He regards you with suspicion for quite some time before shaking his head. Perhaps he's finally accepted that you're here to help. <sighs> Sir, we were indeed in the city earlier. But our purpose was only to gather information on the monsters. We're here to help this city and all the people within it. Your guards are still fighting the monsters as we speak. They could be seriously wounded and in grave need of support. You need all the help you can get. The man regards you with doubt and concern. After a period of inner struggle, he lets out a long sigh and informs you of the locations where the monsters have appeared. Some of our new recruits have never even dealt with a petty thief, and now they're out there fighting monsters. Ugh, if it weren't for this cursed leg. Oh, please, sir. Don't get too worked up. You need to focus on your recovery. Just leave the monsters to us. We're Marshose hunters, after all. Hearing you say that, a glimmer of hope flashes in his eyes. But it disappears almost as quickly as it came. Those monsters aren't easy to deal with. But if you insist on going, I won't stop you either. I just hope all the guards will be able to come back to their families alive. I wish you the best of luck. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, everybody's thing. Oh, we're going to be fighting. <laughs>